will do um, stags in the option with me and they also do various runs to pick up equipment and sort out equipment at various places within the battalion's area or right, to echelon more with our own kit rather than other companies. Are you kept fairly busy in here? Um, physically wise, no. Mentally you can be. Um, it all depends a lot. So, um, sometimes, like at the moment, very, very quiet. Um, once you get an incident, it can be very, very hectic um, because obviously everybody comes in being the, the basically the nerve centre of the company's operations, basically. I imagine you all get a little bit on top of each other enclosed in this mill, do you? You will do. Um, not so much at the moment because we've only been here um, four weeks, but once we've been here, I would say about after Christmas, about six, seven weeks, people will, obviously in a confined space, 150 people, you will do. And then, I mean, the way I find to get over it is you got to go away and lock yourself away somewhere for a couple of hours and let it all hang out, really, and then come back and start again. Do you find you write a lot of letters home, being away? No. Um, I don't personally write because I've got my own phone, and so I ring the wife um, every morning and every evening, and I'll get her out of bed about half six. Sometimes she likes it, sometimes she don't. <laughs> you know, it depends what mood she's in. What are you going to miss most about Christmas? Um, well, obviously, um, the kid opening his presents and the normal family atmosphere. Um, but, uh, I mean, I've done that many Christmas away, I'm getting used to it, but you can never get used to missing your kids in that at Christmas. You know, it's, it's a thing that you, you'll never get used to. How many children do you have? I only have the one. Only the one. Is it a girl or a boy? He's a boy. He's um, nine. And what's his name? Jason. Perhaps you'd like to say hello to Jason and your wife now? Yes, um, I'd like to say hello to Jason and Veronica. I miss you very, very much. Uh, we'll see you in February on the R&R, &R, and I love you. Well, we've now come to one of the briefing rooms in North Howard Street Mill, and with me is Shay Donnelly, who is a section commander with 11 Platoon C Company here. And Shay, I wonder if first of all you could tell us exactly what happens in the briefing room here. Uh, well, basically, um, before any troops would move out of the base location, mm. or before any operation, um, the troops would be brought to one of these briefing rooms and um, would be given a thorough briefing on what exactly was going to happen so that everybody was in the picture and any detailed uh, tasks, individual tasks, um, could be done at this point. And what's your actual job as a section commander? Um, well, I have eight, the section uh, consists of eight men um, under my command, of which is split into two bricks of four, and uh, a lance corporal controls the other brick. Um, we work entirely together, um, but we can work independently as two separate bricks if necessary. Mm -hmm. Now, you all live, work and sleep here at North Howard Street Mill, don't you? Yes, we do everything uh, literally together. And what's morale been like? Because you've only been here a couple of weeks. Well, morale was uh, pretty high at the moment. Um, we've done a lot of hard work since we've been here and uh, we're achieving um, a lot of good results. Now, from what I gather, you're a man who's not really used to spending Christmas at home because Christmas after Christmas you seem to be away on, on duty. Well, not every Christmas, but I've spent um, about four or five Christmas is away from home on tours. Um, it's a question of getting used to it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. is, is, is your wife Marion getting used to things now? Uh, yeah, well, she's kept busy with the kids and uh, she's got a lot to think about. And I gather you, despite being away an awful lot at Christmas, you've still got one more coming on the way. Yeah, I think it's the result of all these tours. Um, yeah, she's due to have the baby in the end of January. Okay, well, Marion and all the family back in Minden are crouched around the telly looking at you. Do you want to say happy Christmas to them? Yeah, I'd love to. Hello, Marion. Hello, John Boy, Emma, and Anna Marie. Uh, I hope you're all having a good time and enjoy your Christmas. And uh, it won't be too long now before I come home and see you for a short while. And uh, I'd like to thank the family's office for doing what they did for me for your birthday. Uh, take care. No problem here. See you soon. All my love. OK, Shay, well, I know you've just come back off patrol, so I'll let you get cleaned up and have something to eat. Great, OK. Hello. Well, I've now come down to the medical centre in North Howard Street Mill, and with me is medical assistant Bob Field. Bob, what is your role here exactly? Well, I'm a regimental medical assistant attached to C Company. Um, I'm also a rifleman, so I'm in fact in an active role in the Major's Rover Group, which goes out on the ground sort of twice or three times a day. 
So you're on hand should anything befall him or That's others. right, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm in fact, you know, I just go around with him when he needs me. It's in case there's an incident while he's out on the ground, he's got a medical assistant on hand. What are the sort of main problems, though, that you're dealing with? Oh, coughs and colds and bruises and sprains and nothing really serious, obviously. I mean, so had a few flues and an ingrown toenail, which was quite disastrous. I mean. <laughs> How does your job compare with your job back in Minden? Um, it's completely different, mainly because in Minden you have a steady flow of work, which is what I prefer, what anybody prefers, really. Whereas over here you have a lot of spare time, and then suddenly you're rushed off your feet for ten minutes, and then you've got lots more spare time. It's, I'd much prefer to be working in Minden, or at least with a steady flow of work. And are you going to be on duty on Christmas Day? Very probably, yeah. <laughs> and so is your wife, Debbie. <laughs> yes, yes, she's a nurse at BMH for Intel, works on Surgical One. Right, it's, uh, so no doubt she'll be grafting like mad on Surgical One. Perhaps you'd like to pass on a message now, then? Yeah, certainly. Right. Well, I right, Deb, um, I'm enjoying myself over here. Wish you over here with me. Uh, you know, maybe you get hold of a rifle and come with me one day. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you're not working too hard, looking after everybody on Surgical One, including staff. Uh, don't forget I love you very much and I'll see you soon. Or oh, half an hour anyway. With a bit of luck, that is. And, uh, well, I'll see you soon anyway. Okay? Alright. <laughs> of course, in any organisation, there's always loads of paperwork to be done. And here at North Howard Street Mill, the man in charge of sorting out all the bits of paper and then putting everything in the correct trays is the company clerk, and that's rifleman Keith Hillman. Keith, presumably you spend all your day in here and you don't tend to go out at all, is that right? Um, no, I do go out um, onto the streets, um, usually two or three times a day uh, on patrols and stuff like that, so I have to fit in the paperwork in between when I go out on the streets. So really you're doing two jobs at the moment? Uh, yes, I am, yes. Does that mean a long day for you? Uh, well, I usually work till about 10, 11 o'clock at night, try and finish all my paperwork before I actually go to bed. So do you get any spare time here at all? Um, not as much as I'd like. Now I know you've got a, a wife and a young one at home, but I believe you've also got one on the way. Yes, so I've uh, got a um, baby due in January, um, so I should be going home on leave for that. Are you going to try and be there at the birth, are you? Um, I want to be, yes, if I can. Isn't that a bit difficult to organise, birth and R&R? &R? Um, it is, yes, but um, I'm hoping to get there just in time. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of luck. OK, well, the family at Minden are watching you at home. Do you want to say hello to them all? Um, yes, I would, please, yeah. Hello, Judy. Hope you're having a nice day, Christmas Day. Um, hope you enjoyed all your presents. Um, hello, Samantha. Hope you're enjoying all your presents that we got you. And Father Christmas brought everything that you wanted. Um, I should be home in January. Uh, just in time for the baby, and um, I'll see you then. Okay, Keith, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. From North Howard Street Mill, we bundled into Land Rovers and armour plated pigs and travelled with armed escort across the city to find the base of another company of Green Jackets, B Company, who are located at McCrory Park on the outskirts of Belfast. Well, the beauty of the Black Mountains in the background contrasts very starkly to what goes on here at McCrory Park, which is the temporary home of B Company, the 2nd Battalion, the Royal Green Jackets. And as we've been going around on our travels today, somebody who's been looking after us and escorting us along our way is Corporal Larry Lamb. Now, Larry, I know you've been in the Army for quite a number of years, 18, I believe. Nearly, yes. Yeah, what sort of places have you been to? Malaya, Gibraltar, Ireland again. <laughs> And, and how does Ireland contrast to the, the warmth of places like Malaya? Well, the weather's terrible over here, but I'd rather be in Gibraltar or somewhere like that where it's much warmer. What about the wife and kids back home? Are they used to having Dad away for Christmas? They are, yes. How many times have you been away over Christmas? Uh, it's three or four times. Eh? That's not too bad in not 18 really, years. Not really, no. Do you want to say hello to all the folks back home in, yes, back yes. Home in Minden? Yes. Go on, then. They're all yours. Hello, June, Robert, Margaret and Susan. I hope to see you all in January. I'm going to come home on my hard and to any other friends who are listening. 
I uh, miss you all very much. Okay, Larry, thanks very much. Thank you. Well, we're in the standby room now. John, what happens here? Well, what happens here is the guys are stood on immediate notice to go anywhere within the company area, or in fact the battalion area, should an incident occur. And how many hours at a time do they do in here? Well, we're working at the moment an eight-hour rotation system, whereas we're on a three-day cycle for standby and guards, and during that three-day cycle, we break it down to eight-hour periods. So they're in here for eight hours? They're in here for eight hours at a time, stood by, yes, ready to move. That must be pretty boring at times if nothing's happening. Well, in fact, they do get crashed out quite regular to cars that are speeding down the falls road and things like that, and there is always something going off. And also, there's various routine patrols and tasks that they do carry out during that eight-hour period. Have you any idea what's going to be happening on Christmas Day here? What normally happens, I can only speak from experience, if we've not made any contingency plans as yet, is that um, as many people that possible are taken away from duty, go to the cookhouse and they have a sit-down Christmas meal, which is served by the officers and sergeants of the regiment. That includes you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your family back home in Minden? What will they be doing this Christmas? Uh, I think the same as any other family that's got people over here at the moment, um, enjoying themselves as best as possible and just waiting for the people to go back and enjoy themselves together. Well, perhaps you'd like to make it up to your wife, Linda, now and say hello to her. Well, hello, Linda, Jamie and Yesa. All I can say is all the best at Christmas and uh, hope you enjoy yourself as best as possible. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in February. Bye. <laughs> Well, I've now come into a steaming cookhouse where cook Tracy Evans is busy preparing lunch. Let's have a few words with you, Tracy. How many hours at a time are you preparing meals? 24 hours? 24 hours a day, yeah. Are there any regular meal times? Yeah, there's three regular meal times during the day. 7.30 to 8.30 is breakfast, 12.30 to 1.30, which is dinner time, and uh, 5.30 to 18.30, evening meal. But otherwise, when the lads come off duty, they can get a hot meal at any time? Yeah, basically. Come in any time of the day. Do you get any complaints about the food? Uh, yeah, we get the odd one or two complaints. But otherwise, uh, no one really complains. I think food is quite important, though, if a chap's tired and maybe a bit homesick. Yeah, it's something to do with morale. That's what it is. So hot food is important, especially for the boys that are out in the cold. Who does their cooking at home in Minden? Uh, well, it's a bit hard to say. Uh, both of us do, really. The wife's not a bad cook. Could do with a bit more practice, but uh, she's not bad. No, in other words, she, she does all the general household items, like changing plugs, car engines and things like that, and I stick to the cooking. That's like a good arrangement. Yeah, uh, she's a um, expecting a baby, isn't she, shortly? Yeah, uh, the baby's due in January, the end of January, early February. And I won't know until they send a signal over from Minden to let me know. Well, this is your ideal chance now uh, to send home a personal message. Uh, well, take care of yourself, love. Uh, take care of the baby as well when it comes, and I'll, I'll see you in February. All good and well. Uh, I've got two messages, one for Joyce Moore. Uh, Joyce Moore and Tanya, take care. Husband's, husband will be home in March. Can't wait to come home and see you soon. And one for the next door neighbour's little girl, Sammy. Wish you the best of Christmas. Hope your dad's home soon. And I'll see you in February. This is the bad. Thank you very much, Tracy. I'll now have a few words with Glenn and you can get back to preparing lunch. Thank you. Do you try and make sure the men get plenty of fresh vegetables? Yes, we try and um, we give them as fresh as we can get it. Otherwise, we give them frozen stuff. It all depends on how readily available the kit is. But we do get a bulk supply of vegetables. Do you regard a balanced diet as important? Yeah, very important because, you know, anything can happen out there, like if the place is dirty and things like that. And we try to keep their food and the hygiene of the kitchen in good order. Are you depressed about being here mm -hmm. at Christmas time? Well, yes, in a way, because my wife's expecting a baby pretty soon. And she's just had a bit of trouble and I would have preferred to be at home with her. But since I'm in the army, I can't really mind the nice job I'm doing. So I've got to do it. I'd like to cheer up then now, Glenn, and pass on a Christmas message. Oh yes, I hope that well lovely, I hope that you, Damien, or Natasha, whichever one it is, have a very wonderful Christmas and I'll see you in the new year. And hope Steve and Mina look after you as good as I've been doing over the past few years, lovely.
We found a company comfortably ensconced at White Rock, a modern purpose-built camp described by some as the Hilton of the Belfast bases. Well, we've now come out to the LAD and servicing bay here at um, White Rock, and the man in charge of looking after all the vehicles is Lance Corporal Bill Delaney. If I can just stop your tinkering for a minute, Bill. How, how many vehicles do you look after here? Well, I've got 14 Land Rovers that we've got to look after, keep on the road, as well as 14 pigs, which are attached to us from the RCT. So, in fact, the bay is normally pretty full, is it? Yeah, it's quite full all the time. Now, I know you've left a, a wife and a, a couple of youngsters behind in Minden. Yeah. So, do you want to send your Christmas greetings to them? Yeah. Hello, Anne, Paul, Simon. I know it's another Christmas away again, but I'll soon be home for me R&R. &R. Mm. And, Simon, you'd be good for Paul. No more fighting. And also um, for Mick, Corporal Mick Condy. He wants to send his love to his girlfriend, Sandra Pritchard at BMH Rintel. And Maggie, I know you'll be enjoying your turkey today. Don't get too drunk. And also, bring your video back with you. We need it. OK, thanks a lot, Bill. I'll let you carry on with right. your tinkering. Thank you. Bye. Well, I've entered forbidden territory here, or so I'm told, because I've come into the bedroom of Martin Harris. Martin, I believe you share this room with the three other members of your brick. Is that right? Yeah, there's uh, four of us all together in the room. And the other three come from Birmingham, come from London. So we get on all right, though. These are the men you're working with and living with all the time? Yeah, we do go on patrol together, do a regard together, you know, mainly everything. But, and so how does this tour compare with other tours you've had in Ireland? Uh, it's not too bad. I'd rather prefer to go to the countryside than the city itself. But uh, I quite enjoy coming over to Ireland. Is that because you feel more vulnerable here in Belfast? In a way, yes. You know, you know, it's a lot different out in the countryside itself. Now, think ahead to Christmas Day. What's your wife going to be doing on Christmas Day? Uh, she'll be working up to Christmas morning, but she's staying around my friend's house for Christmas dinner. We've invited her around for the day. Is this the first Christmas you will have been apart? The uh, first part Christmas apart since we've been married, but we've been apart since we've been with her. Like. Well, you'd better make it up to her now and yeah. uh, send a special Christmas message to her. Hello, Jane. Uh, look after yourself over Christmas. I hope Scotty and Kay look after you. Enjoy Christmas dinner. I'll be seeing you soon. Bye. Back once again inside the secure confines of our armour-plated transport, we made our way to the battalion headquarters at Musgrave Park, where Mike made a beeline for the Russian store. Well, if you found it all a bit of a headache back at home doing the Christmas shopping for the family, then do spare a thought for our master chef, Tony Hendley, because he's the man responsible for doing all the Christmas shopping and all the catering for the 700 or so men of the 2nd Battalion, the Royal Green Jackets. Tony, is it a bit of a problem knowing exactly what food to buy in for the lads? Well, it is in a way, but for Christmas we're ordering in the reason of 35 turkeys, 20 pork legs and 35 gallons, just to cover the meat side of it for the whole six or 700 lads in the battalion. Now, this is your third tour of Northern Ireland, so obviously you're quite a, an old hand at knowing what to buy the lads. And you were telling me earlier, it always goes in a certain cycle, is that right? That's right. What happens is the first few weeks they're out here, they all eat, eat, eat. All the time they permanently eat. And after five or six weeks, they all want to go on diets throughout the whole battalion. Is this it's getting ready for going back for all Well, I think partly is all in all. And then when they come back after all in all, they eat again for a while. And then before they go home again, they all want to go on diets again. <laughs> well, it's nice to know the lads are figure conscious. Oh, yes, and we look after them as best we can. But, of course, yeah. they'll be eating a lot over the Christmas they period. They will. They'll get stuck in for three or four days over the Christmas, and then once again they'll start saying they're putting on too much weight, and they'll be weighing themselves left, right and centre, and then they'll be coming to me for more diets again. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, while you're doing all the Christmas catering here, your wife's back in Minden cooking for the children. So That's do you want right. to say hello to her and all I'd the kids? I'd say hello to my wife, Nolan, and children, Michelle, Shane and Dawn, and also happy birthday for yesterday, love. OK, Tony, thanks Thank very much. Thanks very much indeed. Overlooked by the towering cranes of the Harland and Wolf shipyard is Sydenham Camp, the base of Four Armoured Workshops Ream. Well, I'm perched here rather precariously on top of this recovery vehicle, otherwise known as Brickovery, but two men who are perfectly at home on the top here are Scouse and Mick because they're two recce mechs. Mick, tell me a little bit about the job. You actually take these vehicles into town, do you? Yeah, we take them to the town centre when, uh, if any equipment breaks down in the streets or in the SF bases or anything like that. We've got to get these in there. What sort of area are you covering? You go beyond Belfast? Well, we cover the whole province as such. 
we have got two outposts, as I said, but uh, ma the main part of the recovery is all done from this part. And are you at times going to fairly dangerous areas? Most of the time, in fact, that's where they all get bricked and uh, all the rest of it. Do you have any problems extricating vehicles? Not with the vehicles, it's just part of the job. Are you going to be on call on Christmas Day? We will be, yeah. There'll be three crews on again on Christmas Day. Do you feel a bit unhappy about being away at Christmas? Yeah, pretty much so, yeah. Not very good family man, but uh, I can act it as long as the wife can. Right, well, I'm sure your wife is glued to the television now, so if you'd like to give her a broad smile and say hello. Bean? <laughs> uh, hello, darling. Are you taking care of yourself? Um, have a nice Christmas. Sorry I can't be there with you. Uh, take care. Lots of love. Okay. Thanks very much, Mick. Now, to you, Scouse. You're also a great family man, aren't you? That's right, yeah. Are you feeling a bit miffed at being out here at Christmas time? Yes, again, right. Is it your first time? Uh, well, away from Christmas, no. I've been a, spent a few Christmases away, yeah. Your family's got used to it? Uh, yeah, I don't think you ever get used to it, do you? Yeah. No, you don't. What children do you have? I've got uh, a little boy, David, and he's about 18 months, and uh, a daughter, Rachel, she's uh, six years old. Uh, six years old, you do miss Daddy? Yeah, she does. I miss her as well. Yeah. I would you like to turn now and say something to the scouts? Look after yourself, yeah. I'll see you in January. OK? Thanks very much. Sorry. Cheers. I'll see if I can get down safely from here. <laughs> right, we'll give you a hand. Thanks very much, Judy. Well, I'm no fool. I've come into the warmth yet again, this time to the REOC stores section here at Sydenham Camp, where hopefully you should be able to find anything from the smallest microchip right up to the enormous 12-litre engines which are used in the recovery vehicles that we saw earlier on. The man in charge of looking after the stores is Pat. Pat, I wonder if first of all you could tell us, we hear an awful lot when we go to get our cars repaired, the dreadful cry, we can't get the parts, sir. I wonder if you have any problems along those lines here in Northern Ireland? No, we're uh, quite fortunate actually because um, in an operational theatre we do get number one priority for all stores coming out of UK. So you never have any cars off the road or vehicles just because you can't get the bits? Well, I wouldn't say 100%, but well, we do have a, a slight hold-up when we have to go out to civilian contractors. But otherwise, we have no problems. What about Christmas? Are you going to be open here over Christmas? No, we closed on uh, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and on the 27th. We've had three days off by the OC with various fun and games to perform. Starting, of course, with gunfire at 7 o'clock Christmas morning. Can you explain what gunfire is? Yeah, that's when there's officers and senior ranks wake the lads up and uh, give them coffee and whiskey first thing in the morning. Well, I know you've got three teenagers back in debt mode looking at you. Do you want to say hello to them and the wife? Yes, I will. Hello, darling. Uh, Chan. Sorry I can't be there, but it's a necessity of the army. To Danny, Stephen and Helen, have a happy Christmas and don't play the hi-fi too loud. And I've got a special message for Angela Hunt, wife of Corporal Clive Hunt. Please don't bend the car anymore. Well, that's a, a word of advice from a storm, if ever I heard one. Dave, what about you? How many, how many children have you got back I, in debt I, mode? I've just the one, Karen, and wife, uh, Pat. Well, they're both missing you. Do you want to say hello to them all? Yeah. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, it won't be too long before I see you in Germany. Okay, lovely. And finally, of this bunch here, Spike. Spike, what about you? Who have you got back in debt mode? Well, it's my girlfriend, Helen Webley, who works in the uh, debt mode now. I'd like to say hello to her and uh, to her parents, Chris and uh, Pam, and uh, her younger brother, Ian, as well. Okay, lads, thanks very much indeed. Now, this is something for you children. As you'll see, this recovery vehicle over here has been christened Recovery. But this poor vehicle doesn't yet have a name, so if you've got any bright ideas, perhaps you'd like to jot your suggestions down on a piece of paper and then send them off to Sergeant McGrath, Four Armoured Workshop, VFBO 41. And the child that comes up with the best name will receive a special plaque, so it's well worth having a go, so why don't you have a try? And in the meantime, I'm going to go out and find what's happening to Mr Allen. And so on to what's known as the wheelbarrow workshop, where the three lads who look after these sophisticated gadgets are putting one through its paces and also showing off its favourite party piece. Well, we've seen some of the more humorous aspects of what goes on in the wheelbarrow workshops here, but of course these machines, these wheelbarrows, do play a very important part and have a very serious role to play in Northern Ireland when it comes to bomb disposal. Now, Paul, I know you've been very involved in these machines since you've been over in Northern Ireland. What actually do you do in the workshops here? Our main role is to fix the run-of-the-mill errors, um, sometimes getting blown up completely. 
that's a complete rebuild. Most of the time it's just two little things and keeping the wheelbarrows on the road. But since we've been here, we've found the time to develop a new hamper, uh, which enables us to use an old frame and give the EOD guys a new type of wheelbarrow to work with. So w which bits have you actually changed? This is, this is the hamper here, is it? This front piece here um, is, is slightly smaller on the old wheelbarrow, and the EOD guys would not use it. It didn't give them the movement which they required. But through research and the way they've, we've balanced this hamper here, it gives the EOD guys more movement with this wheelbarrow. So these have now become a lot more versatile since you've been here? Yes, they have. And do you expect this, this new type of model to come into general service? We hope so, yes. We'd hope to think that we have started something here that's going to continue for a while. But um, it, our tour only finished, it finished in January, so we've only the next six weeks really to get this thing well on the road. So you've got a lot of hard work ahead of you. Plenty of hard work. Okay, Paul, well, your wife's watching you in Denmark. If you'd like to say hello to her and wish her a happy Christmas, I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. Yes, to, uh, <laughs> to Sarah, my wife in Detmold, love and miss you, um, love to see you at Christmas. And uh, I have, in fact, a message from a Corporal Wright, and I've forgotten all the names, apart from the fact that he's coming to see some relations in, in Germany, and he's going to kick my backside when he sees me because I forgot their names. But anyway, there's a mention to Corporal Wright's relations in, in Germany. I'm fascinated by this table over here behind which is standing TQMS Staff Sergeant Wally Nakin. Wally, as TQMS you're responsible for all the kit and tools that are issued to the men. What exactly are you doing here? Well I'm just checking the toolbox here in the lunch and one of the VMs, basically to make sure it's all here. Are all the men accountable for all the tools? Oh yes they are, they have to account for every item in here and if there's any item deficient they have to pay for it. And what else does your job entail? Well I have to look up to all the special tools and the vehicles, anything to do with the equipment that the workshop uses. And you have to make sure, presumably, that it's all in working order. That's right, yes. Well, Wally, you've got a family back in Detmold who are missing you this Christmas. Perhaps you'd like to pass on a seasonal greeting to them now. Yes, I would. I'd like to say a Merry Christmas to my wife, Beryl, and my two daughters, Maria and Leanne. I'm looking forward to seeing them shortly. Lovely. Thank you very much, Wally. Thank you. Well, we've now moved on to a very damp Moscow camp in the dockland of Belfast, which is the base of one armoured div transport regiment, RCT. And the OC of two squadron here is Major Bob Crawley. Bob, could you tell me a little bit about the role of the squadron? Yes, I can, Judy. What two squadron does is that they drive and maintain all the armoured personnel carriers that are deployed into the city of Belfast. And that's how many vehicles? Uh, on any given day, approximately 70. And are you being kept quite busy at the moment? Yes, we were, we were certainly very busy when we started, perhaps slightly less so now. That must be rather nice to think with Christmas coming up. It is, actually. I think the boys appreciate it. I've noticed that the squadron seems to have quite a sense of humour. Does that mean that morale is quite high? Yes, it is, actually. They're a super team. Good to work with. Very much so. Perhaps then, Bob, you'd like now to pass on a message to everyone that's been left back in Munsterlager. Yes, I would. Um, to, from all of us here at the wet end in two squadron RCT, to our families, our wives, and indeed to the boys on the rear party back at Munsterlager. A uh, very Merry Christmas from us all, and we look forward to seeing you again in the very beginning of the new year. Well, we've now come in from the cold and wet of Moscow camp to what's very much the nerve centre here of Two Squadron RCT, and that's the Ops Room. Ray, nicely dressed in civvies for the occasion. What else do you do here when you're not cleaning the floors in the ops room? Well, I do uh, duty watchkeeper working in the ops room. That's controlling all the vehicles in Belfast. And I'm also the MT staff sergeant for Moscow Troop. So really here, you know where all the vehicles are at any one time? We hope so. <laughs> uh, it's difficult at times, but we try to keep a track of them. Yeah? Why are you dressed like this today? Well, we thought we'd bring a little bit of uh, difference to the call, you know, so being soldiers, we'd be sailors for the day. <laughs> well, Ray, I know you've got a wife and three children who are all missing you on Christmas Day back in Munsterlager, so would you like to say hello to them all? Yes, please, yeah. Uh, hello, Sue, Neil, Paula, Anthony, 
um, and the in-laws who are out for Christmas. Uh, hope you have a nice time, and we'll all see you soon when we come back. OK, thanks very much indeed, Ray. Turning now to Titch, also very naturally dressed for the occasion. What's your job in Two Squadron, Titch? I'm the admin site for my school camp, uh, and that basically is dealing with the welfare of the chaps and that. My biggest bugbear is the, the televisions, which uh, I have to collect the money for, etc., etc., and repair them. So how many tellies have you got here on Moscow camp? About 32, which is uh, quite some achievement. So you have to go around and collect all the money and go and pay all the shops? Correct. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many family have you got back in Munster Lager, Titch? I've got uh, a wife and two children. Do you want to say hello to them all? Yeah. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, Kelly and Stuart. Not be long now. Home soon. Merry Christmas. Let's have a few words now with Graham and Jeff, who are the driver and his mate of this pig. Graham, you actually drive these pigs out on the streets of Belfast, do you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. What's the nature of your job exactly? Uh, we just uh, change over all the vehicles and all the outlaw cases. If they need a servicing, or they've got a breakdown, then we'll take the fresh ones off our parks here and go and swap them around. And what's it like to drive, actually? What, driving the vehicles? No, right, it's a nice change from the everyday truck, you know. Isn't it rather heavy, though? Yeah, it's a little bit heavy, but once you get used to them, we do 40 hours driving before we come over. So most of the lads are used to them, you know. So they don't find it really hard once they're out. Now, Graham, you've got family back in Munster Lago, who I'm sure yeah. wish you were with them for Christmas. Would you like to pass on a message now to them? Yeah, I'd like to say uh, hello to my wife, Ruth, and my uh, daughter, Emma. Um, sitting there all on their own at Christmas. So I'll have a miss you, and I'll see you in a couple of days now. ta -da. Thanks very much, Graham. Let's turn to you now, Jeff. You work as a team with Graham, do you? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Do you take any turns to drive or what? Uh, mainly my job is just commanding the vehicle, ensuring we get to the place that we're going to at the right time and the right route, because some routes are out of bounds in the city and we've got to go a certain way. So you're in charge of paperwork? Basically, that's my job, paperwork and looking after the radio and any problems that occur while we're out. Right, and you too have got family in Mr. Lago. Yes. So you can say hello. Yeah. To my wife Jill and son Derek, I love and miss you both. 25 days to push from now, I love and miss you and see you soon. Thank you very, very much. I'll let you get back to your vehicle. Right, Thanks. Okay. Well, probably the most unusual thing we've come across here in Moscow camp is this complete prefabricated mock Tudor pub which has been imported by the army from England, lock, stock and barstool, in order to keep all the lads here at Moscow camp refreshed and entertained on these long Irish winter nights. So Judy and I have popped into the pub lunchtime to have a quick orange juice and also to give the lads a chance to send some messages back home to family and friends in Munsterlager. So Judy, it's over to you. Thanks, Mike. I must say, this is a really warm, cosy atmosphere in here, a touch of home from home. Rick, who have you left back at home in Munsterlager? Well, I'm the wife, Rosanna. Would you like to say something to her now? Yeah. Hello, Rose. Uh, see you in the new year. A bit of luck before the new year. Take care. Thanks. Now, what about you, Colin? I'd just like to say um, Merry Christmas to my wife, Ginny, uh, the kids, Darren, Victoria and Alexandra. Great, great. Finally, now to you, Alec. Well, to my wife, Frankie and baby Alison, hope you're having good fun. I believe you're around at uh, Liz McGinley's house, so I hope young Jed and Leanna uh, behaving themselves as well for Jed. And if you tell Cass upstairs that we'll be home for new year, so get the beer out for Hug Monique. Uh, also, because I'm XAC, I've been asked to pass on a few messages to all the wives and girls and, and the children from the cooks. So from Jim, Scouse, Taffy, Bruce, Norrie, Jimmy and Billy, best of luck and the boys will be home soon. OK, thanks very much indeed, Judy. And now to my three here, and first of all, Buzz. Just like to say hello to my wife, Kim, my aunt, two sons, Andrew and Timothy, and my mother-in-law, Pauline. Merry Christmas to you all, and I love you both. Bill? Hello, Chris, Louise. Hope you're having a lovely day. I love and miss you both. Yep. Okay, and finally to you, Bob. Hello, love. Gary, hope you're enjoying yourselves. See you in a few days. Right, that's my lot. And from all the lads here in the Mock Tudor pub at Moscow camp, a very happy Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Well, we've now come back outside to the vehicle park here and having a chat with Bill Hunter, who's the staff sergeant with GT Troop of 12 Squadron here at Moscow camp. 
GT troop, Bill, presumably that means you're in charge of all the four tunners that we see behind us. That's right. Yes, we do the normal resupply runs to all the outland stations. Does that um, keep you quite busy? Very busy, especially now around the Christmas period. So uh, what sort of things are you delivering? Um, anything from a pair of boots to engines, troops. And you go all over the province? All over the province. Any part of Northern Ireland we travel. Mm -hmm. um, now I know your, your wife's going to be missing you back home. Have you got any kids back in Munster? Yes, Lava I have. As well? Two children, boy and a girl, Jason and Donna. OK, do you want to say hello to the missus and also Jason and Donna? Yes. Hello, Christine, Jason and Donna. Hope you're having a wonderful Christmas. See you soon. Take care. OK, thanks very much, Bill. Now, just before the lads go out, I know they've got a lot of work to do. We'll have a word with a few of them, all of whom have got wives and family back in Munster Lager. Starting off with you, Steve. Yes, sir. I've got a wife, Linda, and I've got a son, Paul, in Munster. And uh, out there, have a happy Christmas night, and especially Paul, because he's only four, like, and there will be five next year anyway. And, and he's uh, going to be missing his dad? Oh, obviously, yeah. <laughs> first, the first time I've been away, like, Christmas time. Yeah. OK, Tom? Yes, yeah, I'd like to say hello to my wife, Pam, and Dot Amy. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Nigel sends his best three guys over the Christmas. I just hope you have a lovely time. Be thinking of you. Love you. Done on. Brett? Yeah, I'd like to send all my love to Barbara, my wife, two children, Gavin and Shelley Ann. Hope you have a nice Christmas. Don't drink too much. See you later on. <laughs> and finally to you, Pete. Well, I hope Sheila's having a good Christmas. I know she's not lonely. We uh, son Sean and the niece uh, Helen and sister-in-law Sandra. So have a good Christmas. OK, lads, thanks very much for talking to me. I know you've got a lot of work to do and you've got to get the four tonners out, so I'll leave you to it. I've now joined some men from Border Troop who are actually back on camp now and they're in charge of the Saracens, which are these massive vehicles behind me. Dick, tell me a little bit about the use of the Saracens. Well, we drive the Saracens for the infantry and mainly, of course, the Saracens for uh, moving the soldiers from one position to another. They can also be used with the soldiers that cut in the open in crossfire or something like that and they can be used as a safe refuge, somewhere to hide and take cover behind or else they can be used in uh, VCPs for blocking roads or armour command posts. And are they heavy to manoeuvre, difficult to drive? Because of the visibility and the heavy steering, they're quite difficult to manoeuvre and to drive, yes. What's the top speed? We are only allowed to drive about 20 miles an hour maximum. And they're armed there as well, are they? They carry a heavy machine gun on the top. Right, Dick, well, back home in Munster Lager, you've got a family waiting and wishing you were with them for Christmas. Perhaps you'd like to pass on a message now. I would. I'd like to say uh, hello to Margaret, Janet and Richard and wish you both uh, a happy Christmas and a Merry New Year and I'll see you all in the very near future. Thanks, great. And a word from you, Barry, to your family. So I say hello to my wife, Hildy. See you soon, love. Take care of yourself. Bye for now. Tony. Well, I've been nominated as a troop representative to um, tell everybody back in Munster Lager, especially Ginger Wadsworth's wife, um, Gary Marshall's wife, Hazel, my own wife, and anybody that I've forgotten, and wish them a very happy Christmas. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. And finally to you, Hayden. Well, let's say hello to Elka in Dewsburg and love you lots and see you soon. Happy Christmas. Lovely. Thanks a lot, lads. I'd just like to say farewell from 12 Squadron in Moscow camp. And I hope you in Munslager are as all as happy as we are here because we're all coming home soon and we look forward to seeing you in a few days' time. I'd like to wish you all the very happiest of Christmases and a special greeting to Isabella and Andrew and Melissa and I'll see you in a few days' time. And I'd like to leave the last word to the boys under Paul Smith. Now come to the Maze Prison, which is five or six miles southwest of Lisbon, where D Company Wong Kings are based, and with me is Sergeant Jim Holden. Jim, tell me a little bit about the responsibilities and duties of the company. D Company is in direct support of um, the RUC here, and also to assist the prison officers um, protect the Maze Prison. And also we have um, a responsibility in Hillsborough to patrol there. As you know, the Secretary of State Jim Pryor lives there, Northern Ireland. Um, 
and various other tasks that we have to carry out in the area. And what about your day-to-day -day duties yourself? Well, I work here about a 12-hour shift a day um, with another couple um, and we split the shift. Um, I'm gonna finish, when I finish here, finish my shift to go for a shower and then into the sports stadium. It's quite a good sports stadium. Yeah, it's quite well. It's got two squash courts, volleyball, basketball, five-a-side football pitch, all the things that um, you really need, you know. Do you have much time, though, for recreation? Um, there's a fair amount of time for recreation. There's also enough time to do a bit of work. <laughs> uh -huh. What does your wife think about you being away at Christmas? She's not too pleased about it at this moment, I, think, I don't think. Would you like to say something to her now? Yep. Um, hello, Susan. Miss you. You and the children. Dave sends his regards to Anne. I send my regards to Mo. And where's your wife and children? Uh, Osnabrück. And what are the names of the children? Say hello to them personally. Alexia, Maxine and Nathan. Tim, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir. Well, we've now come to the main entrance of the Long Kesh camp and just driven in in this um, Land Rover, we've got two Kingsmen. There's John Wilson and driving over the far side, Kingsman Nick Carter. John, what have you just come in from doing? Just uh, just on a three-hour stint on the Sangus. So what does that actually mean? Well, around the perimeter of the actual jail, there's uh, a number of Sangus <coughs> and they've all got to be manned all the time, 24 hours a day. And how long have you been here now? About the second week now. And you'll be here all over Christmas? Is yes. It, are you used to being away at Christmas, or is this your first time? No, I was away from home last Christmas as well, away from your wife. Uh-huh. What does your wife think about being away two Christmases in a row? Well, she's not too fond of it, like. Not so much for her, for the little fella as well. And that's back in Osnabrück? Yeah, little son. What's the little fella's name? John Wilson. Uh-huh. Same as Dad? Yeah. But your wife and young John are watching you back in Osnabrück. Do you want to say hello to them? Yeah. Uh, hello, love. Uh, send lots of love and miss you a lot, and look after yourself. Thanks very much indeed, John. And if Nick, you'd just like to come round the front, we'll have a quick word with you. Now, this is the driver of the vehicle, Kingsman Nick Carter. Nick, what exactly are you going to be doing over Christmas on camp? Well, as far as the programme goes for the prison, I think I'll be on Blue Mobile again, which is what I'm doing now. Just generally posting the sensories out on the Sangers, relieving them, making sure they go undressed correctly, uh, reading them their orders, making sure they know the job, and making sure that Everybody gets up for the stags on time. So there's lots of early risers on Christmas morning? Oh, well, they'll be getting up at different times, going to bed at different times, normally over a three-hour period. OK, Nick, well, Sharon and Jamie are both watching you back home in Osnabrück. Do you want to say a, a quick Christmas hello to them? Yeah, I'd just like to say um, Happy New Year, Sharon, and have a nice Christmas. Give my love to Jamie. Love you too, and I'll see you on February the 4th. OK, Nick, thanks very much. I know you're a busy man, so I'll let you get on with your work. OK, thanks. If you're wondering what I'm doing strolling through the delightful grounds of a stately home in Northern Ireland, I should explain that though Castle Dillon was formerly the residence of landed gentry, it's now the temporary home of eight Field Squadron Royal Engineers from Tidworth, and giving them extra support is two Troop 4 Field Squadron from Nienburg, and it's these men that we've come to meet today. So I'm now going to discover whether this beautiful setting belies the actual working conditions. Now, Peter, you work in the ops room here at Castle Dillon, but the majority of the troop are based at Fork Hill. What are they doing there? Well, they're construction, constructing a camp for soldiers that's going down there in the future and for the IUC. You know, it's basically construction work, building, that type of thing. Are you pleased to have been left behind in these apparently gracious surroundings, or would you rather be with the troop? Well, 
I would like to be with the troop because it's where all the friends are. But he is more comfortable. It really is comfortable, isn't it? I mean, it looks super. Yeah, it's one of the better places in Northern Ireland. Now, you're well used to being away at Christmas time. How has your family come to cope with this? Well, they've got used to it. Just like being in the army, you've got to do what you're told. And with being a wife, she's got to do what I tell her. <laughs> <laughs> or she gets no money. <laughs> and what's your family going to be doing? Well, the wife, they'll, she, the wife and the kids, they'll open the Christmas presents as usual and have a Christmas dinner and probably have a few friends around. There's, there's another three wives in our block who are, whose husbands are down in Fort Kill. So they might get together and have a few drinks. I hope now they're gathered around the television if you'd like to turn and say something to them. Oh, yeah. Oh, Anne, Anne-Marie, Paul, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll see you in February, where they are now. And I wish a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all the families of the blokes down in Fort Hill. Please, well, thank you very much. I know you're a busy man, so you better get back to your ops room. Hey, Thanks. thank you. Two lads who've recently arrived here from Nienberg at Castle Dillon are Steve and Stu. Steve, perhaps I could start with you. What exactly is your role in this stately home here? I'm the uh, NTNCO for H Squadron. Uh, I've just, uh, as you say, been attached from Nienberg 4 Squadron. I look after all the vehicles that they've brought over with them and the, the permanent ones as well. Now, who have you left behind in Nienberg? I've left uh, my wife Carol and uh, three birds, uh, two budgies and a cockatiel. I wonder what you're going to say for a minute. <laughs> So do you want to say hello to the menagerie back in Nienberg? Yeah, hello to the menagerie back in Nienberg, and you, Carol. <laughs> I hope you're going to wish her a happy Christmas. Well, yes, I'll wish her on the phone as well. well OK. <laughs> Steve, thanks very much indeed. Also, Stu, this is, I believe, your first tour of Northern Ireland. Yes, my first tour, that's right. And what did you think when you arrived at such luxurious surroundings here? I thought it was a bit posh for a soldier. <laughs> but you're getting used to it? Oh, yes. And who have you left behind in Nienberg? Oh, just a fiancé. And what's her name? Her name's Silver. So she's a German lady? Yes. And how's her English? Well, it's not too good. And then my German's not too good either. Well, we'll test you out, Stu. A chance. This, is a, this will be our first German Christmas greeting. If you have a look at the camera and wish Silke a happy Christmas in your best German. <laughs> ja, mein Schatz, frohe Weihnachten. He's been practicing that for hours. Lad, thanks very much indeed. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Leaving the grace and splendour of Castle Dillon behind us, we made our way to the busy hangars of the Army Air Corps at Aldergrove in County Antrim. The Army Air Corps provides an invaluable service here in Northern Ireland and out here from Hildesheim at the moment are members of 661 Squadron. Bob, you're a senior air crewman with the Lynx here. What sort of role is this helicopter employed in? Well, mainly at the moment in the troop uh, lifting role, i.e. in the support of the guys on the ground, ferrying them from one place to another. And what else could it be used in, you say, mainly at the moment? Uh, well, we have the uh, capability of night sunny at night, i.e. using a searchlight to see other helicopters into landing positions or whatever the commander decides to use it for. And are you working as a permanent team with the pilot? We try to as much as possible, but obviously there are problems, i.e. people going away, people being sick. So as far as possible, yes. Right, but as you say, you're a family man and you're missing your family back home in Hildesheim, so perhaps you'd like to make it up to them, Bob, and pass on a seasonal greeting. Yes, I would. Thank you very much. I'd like to wish my wife, Pat, and my son, Darren, a very happy Christmas, and I look forward to seeing them on R&R, &R, and good luck for the new year as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bob. Now, if I could have a few words with you, Jim. So what? You work in the ops room. Yes. Is that because you prefer to be on terra firma? <laughs> well, I don't really mind, but it's just um, the job I've been chosen to do. Which involves basically what? Um, listening out for pilots on the air and also answering any incoming calls. And I imagine you're on night duty as, well, as often yeah. as you're on day duty. Yes. Um, I'm on 50-50 by the time finished. You've got family back in Hildesheim. Yes. And I'm sure they're <laughs> now gathered around the television and dying to hear a Hopefully, word from you. Yeah. I'd just like to wish my wife, Pauline, and my two daughters, Samantha and Elizabeth, a happy Christmas. Miss you and hope to see you soon. Um, I've got some more messages. One's from Sean Benyon to his wife, Jan, and Terry Simon. He loves and misses you and see, hopes to see you on and now. Um, Phil Kill sends his love to his wife, Caroline, and Cottle Joe Jones to his wife, Kim, and his daughter, Leanne, and hopes to see him soon. Thank you very Thank you. much, Jim. Thank Thanks.
Well, we've now moved inside from the hangar to the LAD office here at Alder Grove, and I'm going to have a chat with Alan Welsh, who's in charge of the LAD attached to the Army Air Corps here. Alan, could you give us an idea of what the LAD actually do here, looking after the, the aircraft outside? Before a pilot climbs into his aircraft, he must be confident that that aircraft is going to do the job required of it. He must know that the engine is going to work, he must know that his controls are going to work. The LED's job in life is to ensure that the pilot has this confidence. Before the aircraft is ever moved out of hangar, we go through it thoroughly, making sure that all the controls are com correctly functioning, that the engine is, is perfect, that the blades are perfect, and that generally the aircraft is in a fit state to fly. Now you've only been here a matter of a few days, so obviously most of the people have got all their Christmas preparations organised. It must make it a bit difficult for you to try and get things going before Christmas. Having come in just before Christmas, uh, we're fitting very nicely into everyone else's plans. It's saved us a lot of organisational problems, actually. So you have got lots of parties and do's lined up? There are certain traditional parties which we will be going to, yes. <laughs> a very diplomatic answer. Now I know you've got a wife and also a youngster, I believe, just seven months old back in Hildesheim. So he's probably looking at Daddy on the telly. Do you want to say hello to him? If he, if he still recognises me, hello Andrew, yes. What about saying Happy Christmas to the wife? I'm hoping uh, that you're having a nice time, Christine, and that uh, life is not too boring on your own. Andrew's there to, to annoy you. Thanks very much indeed, Alan. Now, Ian, I believe even now your wife is probably still unpacking boxes back in Hildesheim. That's right, she is. We got them just two days before I actually left. So, uh, you're right, she's still unpacking. So she's going to have quite a busy sort of Christmas? Well, she'll, be in, she'll have something to keep her interested. She, she won't miss me. And what about the two youngsters? Is it their first time in Germany? It is, yeah. One's only two, the other one's just five. First time we've been abroad with them. Well, they probably won't know too much about what's going on, but they will recognise Daddy when they see him on the screen. So if you'd like to say Happy Christmas to all the family, I'm sure they'd love yes, to hear from you. Yes, thanks very much. Happy Christmas, Deb. Happy Christmas, Tim. Hope you enjoy the presents. And, Jin, I hope you manage to take the insides out of Turkey this year. <laughs> Thank you. Hello there. Dave, you're MT Sergeant, which presumably means you're responsible for everything with four wheels here. Yeah, that's true, yes. Is that very much? Uh, it's about 30 prime movers, uh, tractors, bowsers, Land Rovers, buses, everything that's got four wheels in Alder Grove with regards to the Army Air Corps here. And that keeps you busy? Very busy. Is. is this your first time away at Christmas? Uh, yes, it is. What do you think you're going to miss most? I think just the uh, family atmosphere of being home with the children, especially my daughter who's at boarding school now. How many children do you have? I've got two daughters, Karen and Angela. Well, this is your chance to star, Dave, and they'll be watching you avidly, yes. so if you'd like to smile and say hello to them. Well, I'd like to wish my wife Sue, my two daughters, uh, Karen and Angela, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I love them, miss them, and see them in uh, February. Lovely, thanks, Dave. And Morris, you're the Squadron Sergeant Major, so I imagine that means you've got everyone under your thumb. Yes, that's correct, yes. I control everybody, I hope. And you have to know everything that's going on. Yes, I do, yes. I have to know where the men are all the time, what they're doing. And uh, if there's any problems, I help or try and sort it out as best as I can. I don't imagine this is your first tour in Northern Ireland. No, it isn't. It's my seventh. What about Christmases, though, away? I've been very, very lucky, in fact. This is my first Christmas in all the tours that I've done. Um, I've been lucky enough to grab summer ones. And um, it's my first winter one, and I can feel you at the moment. I suppose you're wearing your thermal underwear, so... <laughs> How did you guess? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to miss about Christmas? Oh, missing the family. Me, uh, my wife and my two girls. Especially Samantha, who's been away, in fact, since September in boarding school in England. And she, I hope she's home and safe. Well, this is your chance to speak to them yes, directly. Yes. Well, I'd like to send um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to my wife, Jenny, and uh, my daughter, Samantha, and Georgina. And last of all, I'd like, from all ranks of 661 Squadron, to the regiment and all the rear party, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Tremendous. Thank you very much, Norris. Thank you. In a remote spot near Enniskillen in County Fermanagh, 80 odd miles west of Belfast, is St Angelo Camp, the temporary residence of one Royal Anglians, who were experiencing sub-zero conditions when we arrived. What sort of tasks do your men have out here? Well, they're involved either on running checkpoints on the borders, or patrolling, or guarding bases. Uh, there's about 120 men 
normally involved on those sort of duties at any one time. Deployed over a fairly large area then? Yes, for manor is about 1,500 square kilometres and it takes about an hour and a half to drive from one end to the other, so it is a large area, yes. The conditions are pretty cold and rugged out here. Does that make the job harder for them? Yes, obviously it does, um, but they're infantrymen and they're used to it and they're doing jolly well. Perhaps now you'd like to pass on a message to those that have been left behind in cellar. Yes, I would. Um, the rear party and the wives are very busy over there at the moment. I'd like to wish them all a Merry Christmas and we'll see them in the new year. And I'd like to ask my wife to get wax on her skis and mine ready for our holiday. Thank you, Colonel. Good. Well, I've managed to find one of the few warm places here at St. Angelo in front of this nice burning brazier. And with me is Stu Horn, who's one of the Remy electricians here. Stu, I wonder what's worse here at St. Angelo. Is it, is it the wet, the cold, the snow, or what? I, I should imagine it's the snow and the ice. We can cope with the rain, but when it gets like this, it gets pretty bad. Because County for Manor is quite notorious for its rainfall, I believe. Oh, yeah. In the first two months when we was over here, in fact, it rained every day by about two. So it's pretty wet. Now, I know you've got a wife back in cellar. Any other family? No, but I've got a dog. A dog? What's he called? Haig, Red Cock Spaniel. So do you want to say hello to Joyce yeah, and Haig back in cellar? Hello, Joyce. Hello, Haig. By the time you get this, we're only have a week to go, then we'll be off to Cyprus. Great. Get a bit of sun. Well, I don't think I can actually remember the last time I was as cold as this. It must be about minus two or minus three here at St. Angelo. And with me, I've got Scotty and Jasper. Um, Scotty's the two-legged one of the pair, if you're a wee bit confused. Scotty, I wonder how this weather actually affects the dog's work here. Well, um, they don't really feel it as that much because the dog's body temperature is a lot higher than a human's. Um, it ranges between 101 and 102, so you can quite imagine that uh, they'd be quite warm underneath the fur, like, you know. Now, I know you've got some family back in Bielefeld, so do you want to say hello to those and also your unit back home? Well, Roger. Um, hello, sis. Uh, I know it'll be Christmas Day now. Um, we're all thinking of you, like, you know. Great. What about the green jackets also in Minden? Hello, it? lads. Um, I haven't seen you for a couple of years now, and I'll be back in March time, like, you know. So, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you soon. Well, there you are. Now, Scotty's dealt with the human element back in BAOR. We'll see if Jasper would like to say Merry Christmas to all the doggies back in Germany. Would like to say Merry Christmas, speak. Jasper? Speak. Speak. Not speak. 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 Come on, Jasper, say Merry Christmas. Speak. Jasper. Hey, speak. Come on. Oh, that will do. Can I have that back? <laughs> <laughs> You're not meant to eat it. Hello, Colin. Hello, Judy. Now, you normally work in the battalion orderly room, so what are you doing inside this Lynx? It's just a spare part-time job. And what's that load, precisely? Loadmaster. And what does that entail? It's just making sure the troops get on and off OK. They don't wreck the aircraft in the way, in the process. The doors are closed. They don't rip the doors off and just making sure it's generally they're all safe inside. And how often are you doing this? It works out about once, once every six days, around about that. It all depends on who's available. Is that something you volunteered for? Yeah, it's all volunteered. <laughs> must Either make way. quite a nice change, really, from being stuck in an office all day long. It does, it gets you out, you see the area, and you see, you, know, you, you just see around everything, you see what's going on then. It makes, it makes a big change, sitting in an office looking at four walls and paperwork. Now you've got family back in cellar, who do you have exactly? It's my wife Penny, two children, Marvin and Heidi. Would you like now to turn to the camera and say something cheering and seasonal <laughs> to your wife Penny? Oh, hello Penny, uh, I'd like to wish you a happy Christmas. And sorry I can't be with you, but due to commitments, I'm stuck here. Say hello to Marvin and Heidi. I'll see you when I see you when I come home. I don't know when that is yet. <laughs> Sometime in January with a bit of luck. OK, Colin, okay. thank you very much. Right, thank you. So it's farewell from Northern Ireland. On behalf of Mike Allen and myself, Judy Fisher, and everyone we spoke to, with apologies to the families and friends of those we were unable to include in our programme, I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a happy 1982. You... You... 
Are you hiding in here? Are you anywhere? Is this what you...